just for me saying I'm gonna give up my life was a hard, it was like, I want this. I love, you know, this being, but like, I, it's, it's no longer just about me. So that when I really met my son, I was able to say, oh, you know what? I'm ready to share my world with you. I'm ready to give you everything you need. So I met my son's mother, um, Stephanie, when we were 15 years old. We were freshmen in high school and she was my best friend. Her last name was Brooks, my last name was Brown. So we actually sat next to each other and we became best friends quickly. Um, neither of us came from the best home environments at that time. And we found comfort in being able to share our pain with each other and um, lost our virginity to each other. And um, just like, you know, kids, we don't know when our parents decide to make us move. And so she moved and I moved and that was the end of our contact. After coming home from an event from the real world, I was presented with a stack of papers for back child support for my son. And if you can imagine being 20, you know, six at the time, I'm still, I get kind of flustered because I was like, what do you do now? What, what's what, what's going to happen here? What? Then I saw my son's name and it was mind blowing to me. Again, here I am in my 20s, selfish, you know, every, everything I'm doing is for me, I'm partying all the time, and now I'm presented with the fact that I have to be a father. And how do you process and deal with that information? I was uh, super anxious about 10, 11 or so, um, and I just remember talking to my brothers and sisters, literally being like, I don't know if I should do this, like, I'm like really scared, I don't know if I should tell mom literally to tell him to just turn around and go back to where he came from. But uh, when I actually like literally met him and hugged him, it was so cool. It, it felt like literally like I was missing something like that for a long time. I remember the first time he and I ever fully hung out. He was showing me photos from when he was like three and five. And I don't even know if he's ever heard this, but I, you know, it broke my heart to be watching these photos and looking at these things and knowing like, I, I, don't, I don't know these moments. You know, I don't know what it was like when you said your first word. I don't know what it was like when you took your first step. Um, and that's heartbreaking for me as a father because I want those memories. But what always makes me feel better and, you know, gives me some sense of joy is that he did have a loving mother that was with him, that was there to express those, be there for those moments. And, you know, I got to experience so many mother moments. You know, I, I got to experience teeth coming out. I got to experience um, first dates and dances and so many other amazing moments and still to this day. So, uh, you know, I, I'm appreciative of the moments I have, but sometimes I do miss out on the, think about the moments that I missed out on. As I was bringing Jason into my life, um, his younger brother um, was very close to the family, was always with us. Eventually, um, a situation happened where he needed to be placed in our house, for in my home for a little bit. And it was only supposed to be a temporary placement, but he started to flourish and he started to do well around me and his brother. And, uh, you know, she and I had another conversation and said, listen, Jason is doing well, Christian is doing well, how about they both come and stay with me and I'll be his legal guardian and we make this work. And again, being one of the most supportive and loving women I've ever met in my life said, yes, if there's an opportunity you can give my children that I can't give them, why am I gonna hold that back? Just make sure that we're still a family. And you know, he moved in and years later, here we are, me raising two boys and you know, we're still a great family. He's amazing. He's very hands-on. He's uh, always, like, if we need help with this thing he has, his plan, do say, ask for help if needed. Um, he's, like, pretty much, like, I can go to him. He's my go-to guy. Like, if I need help with anything or I have any concerns about thing, anything that's in life, or if I just need to talk, 
I could just go to my father and just be like, hey, we could have this honest conversation about what's going on. And then he'll just talk to me and give me some advice and be loving and supporting. Yeah, right. Because, like, because, yeah. Look, yeah. Hey, because look, you... if I have, if you have two, if you have two, uh, okay, so the color. How can you go listen, on your own terms? But listen, like you just went. but I'm trying to explain it. Look, okay. No, so, I know what you're doing, but I'm trying to green. figure out who told you that you could go first. <laughs> like you, you went first. You put green down. No, that, all right. When it comes to parenting, parenting comes in all different shapes and sizes. And for me, it was taking in children who were older. And that's something that happens to a lot of people. Growing up in my neighborhood, there were so many people who, who took in um, older kids, adopted them, fostered them. And I had some point of reference of what that would be like. The, and also with my background being in social work, I knew that it was not to force a relationship, it was to let it grow organically. Oh, this is gonna be my new screensaver. <laughs> you two are so adorable. Damn it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there you go. My sons and I laugh a lot. We watch a lot of TV. We play a lot of music. Music is always playing in this house consistently. We go out to eat a lot and we just try to spend as much time together. The kids play a lot of sports, they play basketball. Um, I try to and they beat me because I suck. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> that actually was, that actually was pretty good. Oh, dad with the fuck? You cannot stop here. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? You feel this, Herbert? No. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You feel this, Herbert? He just got blocked. He got blocked. It's all right. It's all right. You know, my family looks different. People will see that all of us and they think we're brothers and they're like, oh, look at these brothers, where are your parents? And I'm like, no, I'm dad. And then my partner walks up, who's 10 years my senior and, you know, is white with gray hair. And they're like, Who, who's that? You know, and it, it works. And then my son's mother walks up and we're all together and they're like, what's going on here? But it works because we're a family. And at the end of the day, we love each other and we support each other. When I think about what makes a modern family today, it's first of all love. Because it doesn't matter if you're, you know, the children are biologically yours. It doesn't matter if the parent is um, a step parent or if it's they're your grandma, your grandpa, or if they're of different races, sexual orientations, gender identities. And what I've learned, especially being on Queer Eye, talking to all these families, is we all want the same thing. We just want our children to wake up and feel like it's okay to smile. There's no reason for any of us to want to discriminate or hate against someone else because at the end of the day, we all just want the same thing. A happy, healthy life and family. And I think, you know, people should start to try to open their minds up more to the fact that families look different and that's okay.